I'd like to welcome you to the Surfray sponsored webinar on customizing the advanced search page in SharePoint. My name is Josh Noble and I'm co-author of the book Pro SharePoint 2010 Search. I'm also a search consultant for Surfray, which is the developer of the Ontolica search enhancement for SharePoint. As companies are starting to become more mature with their SharePoint deployments and as Microsoft is feeding the marketplace with their fast for SharePoint Kool-Aid, uh, a focus has really been growing around not only how to get content into SharePoint, but how to actually retrieve it. SharePoint has some nice default feature settings uh, out of the box that are useful for most organizations. But to really take advantage of the platform, you need to make customizations based off of how your people use the environment and what they're looking for. In previous webinars, we looked at different ways to manipulate the ser simple search page in SharePoint. To see any of our past webinars on these subjects, such as manipulating the refinement panel, uh, displaying custom properties, or displaying ratings, make sure to check out our pre-recorded webinars at surfray.com. I always recommend that you should keep the simple search page very straightforward. Since it's a landing page for search, it should be provided as a straightforward experience. It doesn't necessarily need to be as basic as Google since most SharePoint sites are intranets and uh, require different interactions than a web search engine, but it shouldn't also throw too many complexities at the, at the user. That isn't to say that your user doesn't need a way to create a more complex search query to bring back a specific set of results. It's just the simple search page isn't necessarily where to uh, create that. So this is where the advanced search page becomes important. It allows you to separate the quick and simple search experiences from the more demanding and precise search experiences which don't come up quite as often. For this webinar, we're going to explore how to provide users with more control over their search query through the advanced search page. As you can see from our agenda, uh, we're going to look at several different ways to do this. In SharePoint, we'll be looking at a few different settings. We'll be looking at um, how to add scopes to the advanced search page. We'll be looking at how to add uh, custom property restrictions to the advanced search page. And finally, we'll look at how to add a new result type picker to the advanced search page. Then we'll go beyond out-of-the-box standard SharePoint search and we'll look at how to use Ontolica uh, to create a custom drop-down uh, in Ontolica search on top of SharePoint and then how to add a custom lookup dialog box to your advanced search page with Ontolica. So before looking at the customizations that I can make to the advanced search page, let's just first take a look at the uh, default advanced search page in SharePoint. So here I'm just going to jump over to a default advanced search page and I'll take note of the various different uh, fields that are already available in this page. At the top section here we notice that I do have uh, various different query fields and what these essentially allow me to do is enter in search terms that are then stringed together with various different boolean operators. And these boolean operators uh, and or near like contains uh, those various different operators that you can enter on global search engines. Uh, many users might not know how to string those together, might not know, uh, have experience with those queries. So what this is allowing me to do is just enter in multiple terms and it will string together various Boolean operators. So here this all of these words is just the AND operator essentially. So as I type in different terms I'm getting the AND operator plugged in between there and that's just like your uh, regular simple search page in SharePoint. Then I get into the exact phrase, so what this allows me to do is it's essentially doing the same as putting quotation marks around a, a query. It's just saying, okay, only return uh, items that, uh, that include this term dream. The, any of these words uh, option allow, is essentially doing uh, an OR operator, so um, I can do fields like this where it says dream or night. Now this isn't, you don't actually have to type this part in, if I was just to type dream and then night, it will automatically throw the OR operator in there and provide results where dream shows up or night shows up, but doesn't necessarily require both of them. And then this final field 
is none of these words, which this is essentially doing a not operator, or, or, or saying that the fields that you enter in, then the terms that you enter in here, can't be in the search result at all. So that allows you to restrict those a bit. Uh, the next area we have on the advanced search page here is the language selector. And this is pretty straightforward, but it allows you it'll actually just let you say, OK, only return results that are in English, only return results that are English and German. Uh, so if you have a federated environment across uh, a, a global deployment, this can become very useful. You can also turn these off if you want to. Next on the page we have a result type option and what this allows me to do is say okay only return results that are this particular file type. So by default it's showing all results but I can define down into documents and depending on what you want documents to be in your organization you can set this but uh, as we'll look at later this actually has some preset parameters um, that are um, word files, PDFs, things like that. We can actually set and say, OK, only return Word dial, uh, documents, so things like document and docx. Uh, I can only return Excel documents or only return PowerPoint presentations. And so this is actually one of the areas that I'll show you how to customize. So you can add additional fields here, because you might have uh, things like um, Adobe Creative Suite files that you want your marketing team specifically to be able to search on. Or you might have uh, Autodesk files that you want your engineering team to only be able to search on. And so you can add additional uh, file types here and specify new result types. The final bit that we have here is this property restriction, uh, or the property picker. And this was available in Moss 2007 as well, uh, as well as most of these other features right here. And what this allows you to do is choose a particular uh, property and string together very advanced queries. So I might be able to say, OK, only return uh, content that is authored by um, Josh. So here I could say, OK, choose a value. I mean, choose a, uh, a category, and then I'm going to choose a value, so meaning it needs to contain something. And then I can say it only needs to make sure that the author contains Josh. Then if I want to string together an even more advanced query, I can press plus there, and then say uh, only return items where the last modified date is earlier than um, 6-1. Eleven, and, uh, and build out a query around that and search and pull back a set of results. So fairly straightforward functionality, but providing a bit more uh, advanced query uh, functionality than my basic search page. What you're not seeing here yet that is a pretty common experience in SharePoint is the scope picker. And so that'll be the first thing that we want to add to this page is how do I add the ability to choose scopes that I've already created uh, in my search environment. And, and scopes are a very basic feature. Uh, scopes essentially allow your administrator to define custom rules for content that's returned. So you can define a wide range of parameters for scopes, such as the location of files, uh, required properties, maybe even file types. And what these are allowing you to really do is just choose a string of these various different properties. But instead of making users enter in strings here and build out a very uh, advanced property restriction, why not give them just one little button that you can click that throws together a big string of, uh, of properties? And so uh, scopes exactly allow you to do that. Now, keep in mind, they obviously take a little bit of thought about your environment because uh, although things such as all sites and people are default scopes, uh, things such as uh, only return Autodesk files from this location that are authored in the last 30 days uh, are not uh, default options. So you do need to create those. So the topic of actually creating scopes would take an entire session. So I'm not I'm going to skip that part for this particular webinar. But for anybody that just needs a refresh, refresher on uh, where you create scopes in SharePoint 2010, you do so in Central Admin in the Search Service Application Settings, and then there's an option for scopes. And after you create a scope, you do need to run a full crawl. So. For this particular example, I've already created a, a simple scope that will allow me to only look for content in my dreams document library. So here, if you'll notice here, I pop over and I can see my various different document libraries in my environment. And I have my shared documents here, and then I have a dreams document library that I've already created. And the scope that we'll use here is a pretty basic scope example. Uh, but 
even this simple location uh, scope can be a very powerful experience in a real world environment. So for example, let's say that my engineering team needs to search for safety codes, MSDS sheets, and hazardous materials lists. Uh, let's say that those three different resources are scattered between 10 different document libraries because various teams are working independently and uploading different content to their own little document libraries. So I could create a scope titled uh, Material Safety that allows engineers to quickly restrict searches to the locations where that content is located and cut out a lot of the noise from a search result. So why not give them just a little drop down option or a little checkbox uh, option that allows them to choose that. So getting back into how I actually expose this scope to the advanced search page, I mentioned that the scope uh, was already created. And I did this in advance because it takes about 15 minutes to become available after you've set up a scope and run a full crawl. To make it available to the advanced search page, I still have a couple set steps that I need to go through after creating the scope. So the first things first, I'm going to go to my site actions here and I'm going to go to site settings and then I'm going to go up to my top level site settings because I want to make these uh, changes available to any of my advanced search centers and I'm going to go to uh, search scopes under the site collection administration and here we'll notice that I have various different scopes that are already available. Uh, the first is all sites, and this is the default scope for any of your search centers, and this is available just out of the box in SharePoint. Uh, and people is also available out of the box in just standard SharePoint, and this is the scope whenever you tab over to the people tab or the people search tab. We'll notice that these are then broken out into various different uh, areas that you can use them. One is the search drop-down, so that's the, uh, the small search box that you find on the top of uh, most of your pages. And so sites and people are already available there. And then uh, under the advanced search page, we notice that I don't have any other options outside of just all sites. You can actually see over on the right here how many different uh, results are in uh, each particular scope and I'll notice down here that I do have my dreams document library scope and uh, I do only have only about three items here but this is still uh, useful here just to show you how to set it so here it's uh, we see that it's unused in any scopes and what I need to do is put it in this advanced search scope and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to display groups and I'm going to choose my advanced search and then all I need to do is just make that dreams document library available. And while I'm here, I might as well just add people. I can also set the default scope uh, for my advanced search pages. And I can change the location uh, from the top where the, the particular scope is going to be made available once I put it on my advanced search page. And by clicking OK there, all I'm doing is I'm just saying, OK, now the advanced search page is going to have those scopes available to it. Um, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to show it all the, already, but my advanced search pages will have those available. And so what I then need to do for a final step is actually make that particular scope available to my advanced search page. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my search, advanced search page. And then I'm going to uh, work with the particular web part that I want to uh, be in this advanced search page web part. And so uh, for anybody that's done any sort of SharePoint customization, you're probably very familiar with this. But I'm just, I just went to edit, uh, edit the page at Site Actions. And here I'm going to go to this particular advanced search web part. And I'm just going to edit the web part. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through every setting on the web part, but if you play around here, you will notice that there's various different settings that you can change and manipulate here. Uh, for example, maybe you want to remove one of these particular query fields. All you have to do is uncheck the box next to the, t uh, the query field that you want to remove. Uh, but in this case, we want to work with scopes. So I'm just going to check uh, Show the Scope Picker. And that's just going to make those scopes that we've already applied uh, be available on this particular page. So here I'm going to click Apply and OK. And then before those scopes are going to be available to my users, I'm going to need to check the page back in. So do that here. And we'll notice now those scopes are available to people.